church. And from time to time, we've preached messages just about salvation. Uh, sometimes I feel the need for that, especially if we have lots of visitors we're expecting. But this message is primarily for Christian people. And I pray it would be a blessing to everybody here. Now, if you're not a Christian, you won't get as much of a blessing out of it. But if you become a Christian, you'll really appreciate messages like this because it'll encourage you to stand in a day when everything is working against you to stand for the Lord. Yeah. The flesh works against you. The world works against you. The devil works against you. There is a real devil. Yeah. If you take a step forward, you mark her down, you can expect the devil to go after you. Right. Right. Man got baptized last Sunday. He said, Preacher, the devil been after me all week. Oh, yeah. That's right. He said it happened unexpectedly on his job. Somebody just saying things about him that just weren't so. And, right. and I said, Well, that's the way the devil works. If you yeah. take a step forward, the devil's going to be upset. <laughs> and he'll do everything he can to discourage you. That's right. Now, if you found the book of Jeremiah, chapter 9 is where we want to look at. Jeremiah, the ninth chapter. And in Jeremiah chapter 9, would you stand with me? We're going to begin with verse 1, go down through verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah, of course, many of you know, was known as the weeping prophet. And he wrote one little book that is named Lamentations that follows the book of Jeremiah. If you have Jeremiah 9, the Bible says in verse 1, All oh, that my head were waters, and mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they be all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. That's sad for that to be said about God's own people. And they bend their tongues like their bow for lies. But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. Take ye heed, every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. And they will deceive every one his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their lump, their tongue to speak lies. You see, you can get good at lying. Yeah, that's right. Yep. And weary themselves to commit iniquity. Mm -hmm. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them, for how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in heart he layeth his weight. We're going to pause our reading there. Our text for this morning's message is verse 3, where the Bible says, And they bend their tongues like their bow for lies, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth, for they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. Will you bow your heads and hearts together for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of knowing you. We understand that lost people don't know you at all, but we also understand that there's many people that know very little about their own Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that you would help us in this church to grow every day in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, dear Father, to be what you would want us to be as a church. Help us, dear Lord, to be what you want us to be as individual Christians. Stir our hearts, I pray, Lord, we get so discouraged if we focus on this world. We get so discouraged as we look at things crumbling about us in our country more 
Father, I pray you help us to keep our eyes on Jesus until you take us home. Now, Father, bless the message is our prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Be seated. In our scripture reading, in verse 2, it almost looks like the Lord would like to go on vacation and get away from God's people. All that I had in the wilderness, a lodging place. Y'all remember from the book of Proverbs what the Bible says about a man being better off out in the wilderness? Any of you? It has to do with the fact that it's better to be in the, in the wilderness than to be with a brawling woman in a white house. In other words, sometimes it can be awful to be at home if you're not have, having peace and happiness at home. And God said, I sometimes would like to just get away from a people, go into a, a wilderness, and find a lodging place there. Come on, some of y'all know the attractiveness of being able to go get a cabin in the woods for just a week and get away from it all. And the Lord says, my people are all adulterers. He says, they mend their tongues like a bowl for lies. He said, they're not valiant for the truth. Now the word valiant simply means that you're courageous about the truth. You're strong about the truth. You're brave about the truth. I wonder how the Lord feels about our church. I wonder how the Lord feels about the average Christian today concerning the need to have somebody who is valiant for the truth. Many people have forsaken the truth. Yep. Yep. The cults have certainly forsaken the truth. Do you know there's a cult that meets in our town and in other towns that declares that God evolved and that you can evolve into what God is? One of their sayings is, is what God, uh, or what man is, God was. And what God is, man can become. And they think that you can eventually evolve to where you become like God. The cults teach lies about the nature of God. They teach lies about Jesus and who He is. They teach lies about the nature of salvation. But not only have cults forsaken the truth, but carnal-minded Christians have forsaken the truth. Some people call them Sunday morning Christians. Sometimes they're called fair-weather Christians because they only come when it's easy and convenient. Sadly, so many of us are so caught up in making money, in solving family problems, in dealing with health issues, in being interested in political issues, sports, education, vacation, television, the Internet, that they can't care less about the truth of the Word of God. This week, a man, I was encouraging people to read the Bible in a note on the internet, and somebody came back and said, and claimed to be saved, said, I never read my Bible. Well, I tell you, if I never read my Bible, I wouldn't tell you about it. Amen. Amen. You know what I posted back to him? I said, don't confess your sins to me. I said, get right. <laughs> and after that, I wrote him privately. He and I got to talking privately. And I will praise the Lord. I'm not here to mess with anybody's reputation or name. But I'm here to tell you that he took what I said to him privately well. Ms. O'Neill read it. He took it well as I encouraged him privately to figure out how to make a time to read the Word of God. He worked 70 to 100 hours a week, and he was using that as an excuse not to read the Bible. And I won't tell you here the thing I told him, but I will say this. I praise God that he took it well. And uh, toward the end of our little conversation, private conversation, I said, I praise the Lord for your receptive spirit. Right. But not only do carnal-minded Christians forsake the truth, cults forsake the truth, the compromisers have forsaken the truth. People who know the truth, but they're not willing to stand for the truth. They're not willing to lose money over the truth. They're not willing to lose friends over the truth. They're not willing to lose popularity over the truth. 
There's lots of, listen, the temptation to compromise is great if it's going to cost you something. And if you're a preacher and your desire is to reach more people especially, the temptation to compromise is great. There are men who know the Lord, know what is right, but because of the goal that they have, they many times have compromised because they feel like that the end justifies the means. Yeah. They've not been valued for the truth. When you're valued for the truth, beloved, you the end is being valued for the truth, for the truth's sake. And if it makes things wonderful, praise God. Amen. But if it brings things down around you, Praise God. The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. But we all ought to be valued for the truth. Amen. Do I need to tell you the title for this morning's message? The title is Valiant for the Truth. Valiant for the Truth. Let me ask you, will you as a church, will you as an individual, when it's time to be counted, will you be valued for the truth? Somebody says, I want you to know, preacher, I'm behind you 100%. Yeah, but sometimes those people who get behind you 100% are so far behind you, you can't find them Amen. when you need them. Amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, Luke uh, was the only person that was still hanging in there with the Apostle Paul. He said, in my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. But then he said, nevertheless, the Lord stood with me and delivered me. I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. I will encourage our church to be valiant for the truth. And uh, the first thought that I want to give you about that is if you and I are going to be valiant for the truth, the first thing you've got to do is find the truth. You know, a lot of people think that there is no absolute truth. And they find fault with us because we have found it. Yeah. We know the truth is. I was speaking to a guy who was pretty proud of his intelligence. Some people are. I'll never forget one guy sitting across the table from me here in this town. And, uh, and he said to me, he said, you know, I'm educated like you are. And I thought to myself, He's not saying much. <laughs> I'm from South Georgia. I went, somebody said, where'd you go to college? I went to Darty High School. And I was so glad to get done, get through with it. Yes, I've done more than that. But, but God's not impressed nope. with your uh, education. Nope. A lot of people have been educated and don't know where the truth is. Yeah. Yeah. You can have a third grade education and no more than the professors at the colleges and universities when it counts. Right. Right. If you know Jesus Christ. Yep. There's so many conflicting opinions, theories, theological systems, philosophies, creeds, and religions. It's no wonder that somebody who's not saved throws up his hands like Pontius Pilate may have done and cries out, What is true? Yeah. That's John 18, 38. Wow. He was looking truth in the face. Let me say that if you want to find the truth, let me say first of all, the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, is truth. Amen. The Savior is truth. John 14, 6, Jesus said, Verily I, I say unto you, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say I'm a truth. He said I'm the truth. He said I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is truth. I'm glad that I know where the truth is. Amen. And the truth is Jesus. February 11, 1968, I found the truth and I will be valiant for him. You know, there was a time when Peter lost his courage. <clears throat> Has there ever been a time when you lost your courage? Yes. The Lord wants us to be valiant for Jesus Christ. How sad it must have been for our Savior to be headed toward Calvary and nobody would stay with Him. 
And Simon Peter, who said, Though all men forsake you, I'll not forsake you. Though all men deny you, I'll not deny you. And of course, it's been recorded throughout all time now in the New Testament, in the Word of God. That one cock, that one rooster, cried out, and cried out the fulfillment of the Lord's prophecies. And sure enough, Peter did deny the Lord. Yeah. There was a time when he was not valued for the truth. If you're not careful, <coughs> you'll be tempted by members of your family to not be valued for the truth. Right. Right. I'm talking about basic things. I'm not talking about intricate things of detailed doctrine. I'm talking about such things as going to church. Right. I'm talking about such things as tithing and giving offerings off of your income. I'm talking about scheduled, daily, regular prayer. Amen. I'm talking about abstaining from evil. I'm talking about running with the right crowd. Simple, basic things. But not only is the Savior truth, I'll tell you something else. The Scriptures are truth. This is truth right here. I found it. Now, you can't be valiant for the truth if you don't know where the truth is. The problem with a bunch of these radio and TV preachers is they don't know where the truth is. I don't listen to them. I don't listen to that bunch of preachers from an NIV, New King James, New International, New Revised Standard Version, Contemporary English Version, Standard English Version, or whatever. I don't, I don't listen to those guys. I'm going to listen to somebody preach. I want to hear them preach from this book. Amen. And I'm talking about the King James 1611 Authorized Version Bible is what I'm talking about. And I really would rather hear them preach from this book if I'm confident they believe this book. Amen. And I'm not talking about necessarily they, they understand everything exactly the same way I do. I just mean that they mean what they say when they preach this book. They really believe every word in it. Amen. Amen. I may not understand every word in it. I may not be able to interpret everything properly. But you're looking at a preacher that believes this book I'm preaching. Amen. I'm not changing. Amen. The Bible, the Word of God, the Scriptures are the truth, pure truth. Every word of God is pure. Amen. Proverbs 30, verse 5 says, The words of the Lord are pure words. Psalm 12, 6 says, Jesus said, Thy word is truth. John 17, 17 is pray. Brother, this is powerful truth too. I don't know what to compare it to today with, with various type, types of explosions and all and, and powerful things that they can blow things apart with. But I tell you what, if you want to blow something up, bring this Bible out. I can tell you, it can cause an explosion. Yeah. You have some people having a good time doing wrong, just get the Bible out and throw it right out there in the middle of them. They will scatter like bugs running from rain. <laughs> They'll scatter, boy, because that, that Bible's powerful. Amen. Amen. Quicker, quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It can bust things to pieces when it comes to folk wanting to get into sin and blasphemy and wickedness. Third thing I'll say quickly is the Spirit of God is true. The Spirit of God is true. Thank God for the Holy Spirit Amen. that leads every believer. Thank God for the Spirit of God that gave birth to every believer. Amen. The Spirit of God is true. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 6, it is the Spirit that beareth witness because the Spirit is truth. Preach the Bible? Well, if you're going to be valiant for the truth, you can't be valiant for the truth if you don't have found the truth. So, if you're looking for somebody in politics to be valiant for the truth, they're going to have to have those things that I just mentioned. If you're expecting something, now thank God for every right move that anybody makes. I thank God for every right move, our president, our congress, our judges. I thank God for every right move they make in a good direction. But if you expect one of them to be valued for the truth, they've got to be saved. They've got to be saved. They've got to know the Savior. They've got to know the Scriptures. They've got to know the Holy Spirit yep. in order to find the truth. Right. Some people get some help by second-hand religion. That is, they know somebody who knows God. Right. That happens sometimes. Number two, if you want to be valued for the truth, 
Not only find the truth, but be willing to fight for the truth and with the truth. Yeah. If you're going to be valiant, you've got to be willing. There are no pacifists who are valiant for the truth. You've got to be willing to take a stand. Dearly beloved, I want to encourage us as a church to stand together for the truth. Let's exercise charity toward one another about understanding the truth and applying the truth in our lives, but let's stand together for the truth against evil, against falsehood, against wickedness. Amen. God can do something with a church like that. Yeah. God will smile upon us. God, I don't want God to take a vacation away from us. You know, I believe there are some churches that God has left them and He's gone and found Him a cabin in the wilderness. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I know that, I know doctrinally speaking, Jesus is never a believer. I understand. I'm just talking about, practically speaking, there are some churches that haven't been visited by God in a long time. They haven't had fire preaching in a long time. Nobody's got under conviction in a long time. Nobody's got converted in a long time. I realize we live in a carnal world as that I believe that the United States of America in regard to morals and, and compromise and turning its back on the Lord is at the worst place it's ever been in my lifetime. Right. God is still able. Yeah. And He's looking for people like you to be valiant for the truth. If you found the truth, fight with the truth. Amen. Fight for the truth. Be valiant for the truth. Amen. The Bible calls the Bible the sword of the Spirit in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. You ought to take that sword, brother. Amen. I wish they were here. The couple that got baptized Sunday gave me a little gift. It is a plaque in the form of a shield. And on the plaque, it's got a picture of a sword, wood, wood engraved, and a piece of wood. The, the plaque is a, it's a piece of wood, and the in the shape kind of a shield. But it's got a sword there, and it says King James, 1611. Amen. That's my sword. Amen. That's my weapon. Amen. Those of you that carry, do you feel better if you're carrying your weapon? Amen. Every Christian ought to be carrying. Yeah. Amen. I'm not talking about um, a literal weapon. I'm talking about this weapon. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, you got God's permission to carry this thing concealed. That's right. That's right. If you want to. Anywhere. That's right. Psalm 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Thank God for the permit that we've got. Now, if you're going to be valiant for the truth, be willing. And be willing to defend it. Paul said, you know, I know there's people who say, you don't defend the, the Word of God. You don't defend the Gospel. You just let it go. Well, there's some truth to that. But the Apostle Paul said, and the Bible recorded it for your admonition and mine, in Philippians 1.17, I am set for the defense of the Gospel. That's why I believe our church ought to declare what the Gospel is and declare it regularly and clearly. Amen. I put it in the bulletin this, this week. That I don't, we don't preach a plan of salvation here. We preach the man of salvation here. We don't tell you there's something you can do to be saved. We tell you there's something Christ did to be saved. Amen. And here's the message. You listen to me. Here's what saves a sinner. It's the gospel of Christ. Amen. And here's what saves you. Christ died for our sins. Amen. According to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. There's absolutely nothing you can do to get you to heaven. Nothing. You can't tell, nobody can tell you what to do to be saved. But they can tell you what Christ did. And they can tell you to trust Him. And guess what? God will save you. Amen. It's not something you do. It's somebody on whom you believe. I realize that may sound like technicalities. But if you associate do with a deed, there's no deed you can do. That's going to get you in. The deed has been done. Amen. Jesus hung on the cross and cried out among his other six sayings, It is finished. Right. Jesus did it all. Amen. On the cross of Calvary. That's why.
why that salvation is now a gift. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If I want to give you something, I give it to you, and you don't have to pay for it. You know why you don't have it? He has not received it. That's all. That's all. Amen. You don't even have to ask me for it. If you just reach out your hand and take it, he don't want it. He's got a better pen. <laughs> okay? The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible tells us how you receive that gift. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You receive Christ by faith. You trust in him and what he did for you on the cross. Now, if you want to be valiant for the truth, you've got to fight for it with the truth. Defend it clearly. Contend for the faith. Open your mouth. Amen. Amen. Lots of people in churches are willing to open their mouths to try to defend their position in a business meeting. But it's very rare when you find a Christian that will open his mouth on the job and take a stand for Jesus Christ. May God give us courage. It's very rare when a Christian gets around with family members and one family member starts cursing God. And starts using vile language and talking filthy. That somebody in the family will say, shut up. Amen. Very rare that somebody will take a stand for the truth and say in the presence of family members, that's a cult. That's not true religion. That's not true Christianity. That's not true faith. Defend it clearly. De declare the truth continuously. Use every chance that you get. Use your phone for Jesus, not just gospel. Amen. Amen. Use the internet to contend for the faith. Use the internet uh, rather than just post pictures. Use the internet to tell people that you're saved. Amen. Don't make me leave the pulpit. Amen. Use the internet. Use your telephone. Use your letters. Use your email. Use everything to tell people that you've heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Amen. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Don't be afraid. Do it all over the place. Amen. You ladies, stick, stick tracks in your purse. You don't have to do like the one fellow did that I told you about, this evangelist who went into a restaurant and started dropping tracks out of his pocket. He just dropped them on the floor as he walked along, knowing somebody was going to have to pick them up. Kind of like you and I were talking about somebody uh, having to deal with God about picking up one of our leaflets from literature on Saturday that we gave out. I'm not saying you got to do that, but it'd be good for you to have tracks with you. Amen. You can leave them, leave them with a tip, leave them when you buy gas. Leave when you go to the restaurant. Leave them when you, when you go and buy groceries. Yeah. Give them to the door-to-door -door salesman. Declare it continuously and dispute it courageously. And say, hey, hold it! Nobody can get saved by working their way to heaven. Yeah. Somebody says, well, you know, we're all trying to get to the same place. Yeah. You need to be valiant for the truth and say, I'm not trying anything. I'm going because Jesus died for me. Right. And nobody's going to get to heaven by what they try to do. You get to heaven, you're going to get to heaven by grace through faith in the finished Amen. work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Third thing I'll give you, and we'll quit. And that is, if you want to be valued for the truth, you not only need to find the truth and fight for and with the truth, but number three, you need to follow the truth. Amen. You need to follow the truth. God wants you and me to live by the truth. That we are valued for. Yeah. David said in Psalm 119, 59, I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. Would you listen to that one more time, please? I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. That's Psalm 119, verse 59. You'll be valued for the truth? Follow the truth. Turn your feet. Think about what you're doing. Think about your music. Think about your dress. Think about your living standards. Think about your choices that you're making. And line it up with what the Bible says. And if what you're doing doesn't line up with what this Bible says, change it. And turn your feet toward what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. And I want you to know God's way is the best way. It's 
not only the way that you're going to be glad that you follow it when you stand before the Lord someday, but it's the best way in life. I wish I was a better husband. My wife probably wishes I was too. But I tell you this, God's way is the best way in marriage. Amen. I've been in love with one woman for 46 years. And the thing that's been the best thing that's kept us together is the Lord Himself and the truth of the Word of God. Amen. That's the sweetest woman in the world, but it's because of what Jesus is doing in her. Amen. And if there's, and if there's anything that makes me a decent husband at all, it's only the Lord and His truth. Amen. Dearly beloved, follow the truth. Turn your feet under His testimonies. Surrender your will to the truth. You remember even our Savior said, not my will, but thine be done. The key is, be willing. The key is, be desiring to know the truth and do it. So, surrender your will to the truth. Hear my Lord, send me. Speak, thy servant hear. And then start to walk in the truth. Make the decision. Take the first step, whatever it is. When you know the truth, take the first step and just do it. Amen. Whatever it is, God will not do it for you. He may send somebody to remind you about it. He may in kindness stir your heart about it. He may even send a whale your way if it's really important for you to get turned around for somebody else's sake. Amen. But it's up to you to turn to Him and turn your feet. To his testimonies. Surrender your will to the truth. Start to walk in the truth. And stay in the way of truth. <coughs> Do you know that list of members that we passed out earlier uh, today. Do you know most of the members are new members? Most of the members, the majority of the members on the list are newer members. Now part of the reason for that is good. Part of the reason for that is, is we're reaching new people. Thank the Lord for that. Thank God for sending us people. Thank God for people who are going after people. And we thank God for new people that way. But you know another reason why that more of the members are newer members? Is because it's so hard to get new members to stay. People are fickle. And it is so hard to get new members to stay. If you're a newer member, you can't imagine what it's like to be in a church for a long time. See people come in. See people have a lot of attention paid to them. See them take on jobs. See them excite everybody. Get your own heart thrilled. And then see them disappear. Your newer members can't imagine how tempting it is for older members to develop a bad attitude. Want to say, well, I wonder if they'll last. I wonder if they'll last. Don't get on to us. Don't, don't, don't get all upset at us because if we have a little skepticism and it's because it's so hard to get people who will stay. If you want to be valiant for the truth, you stay in the truth. I'd like to see you at Glenwood Baptist Church 10 years from now. 20 years from now. 30 years from now. I plan on living to be about 150. So. I hope to see you here for a long time. Will you be valiant for the truth with me? The Lord says, got nobody to be valiant for the truth. Let's do it. We stand with you, brothers. Let's stand.